Hello Math 1. This video is on 7b, which is determining the domain and range of a function. Now, if you remember from the chapter, we talked about what a relation is. We said a relation is a set, right, or a bunch of ordered pairs. And remember, an ordered pair consists of an x and a y value, and when we use set notation, we would just put a bunch of ordered pairs right in the set notation and this defines a relation okay now we said a function is basically a relation so basically a bunch of ordered pairs such that for each input there is exactly one output now what defines the inputs and the outputs well the inputs are the independent variables right whereas the outputs are the dependent variables okay now these inputs tend to be our x values and the outputs tend to be our y values so when we talk about the inputs these are the values of the variable you plug into the function but then the outputs are basically the value of the expression after you evaluate right the function with a given input and when you evaluate it you must use correct order of operations okay so the domain of a function the, the domain is basically the set of x values the range is a set of y values now there's one thing that you have to understand here remember we've talked about two types of data we've talked about discrete data and we've talked about continuous data when your data is discrete right meaning the dots aren't connected they're all individual you know um, values right so it's not continuous it's basically separate right if it's discrete, you're going to use set notation and write the x and y values in the set notation. If the dots are connected, right, we need to describe it. Or if it's continuous, it's connected, which means we use interval notation. And that is when we have to decide whether we're going to use a, a round parentheses, right, or a square bracket. Okay, so now we're going to go through some of these and um, try and make sense of it all. So a mapping diagram, that's what we're going to look at first, right? A mapping diagram is a diagram that pairs each, oh, I'm actually going to use input, each input with an output value. And remember, inputs are your x values, outputs are your y values. So right away, when we look at a my, di, uh, mapping diagram, the left is always your input because the left always goes out to the right. So right away here, these are the elements of your domain. So the domain here would be 3, 5, and 9. Now the range. So I like these problems, but I don't like these problems. But the range, if I look, these inputs only go to two outputs in this area. Right, six is not part of the range here because it's not uh, doesn't have a corresponding input value. So the range would be zero and four. On a test, we wouldn't do that to you, but it's something we have to think of. So when I look at letter B, right, my domain, right away here. If I look, these are my input values or my x values. So I'm going to put them in numerical order: three, five, six, seven nine my range is going to be my output values three five seven we always want to put this in least to greatest and letter c if i look my input values right these are going to be the elements of my domain so you set notation zero one two four eight and my range now, which one does not have an input going to it? Six, so we're gonna take that one out and say my range is just one, 
seven, and nine. Okay, now when we get to a table, it's really no different, right? The domain is gonna be a set of X values, the range is gonna be a set of Y values. So the domain here in numerical order, it's gonna be negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. And my outputs or my range would be negative three, negative one, one, three, five, seven, nine. So do me a favor, right? Um, pause the video and go do B and C on your own and D and let me know if, or come back and check your answer. So for letter B, if I look, my domain is a set of inputs, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. My outputs, right, are right here, 0 0.44, 0 0.67, and so on, okay? For letter C, now because four and one repeat here, I only write them once in my domain. So my domain is just 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. My range, right, now becomes negative one, or negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, okay? And letter D, no different. My top one's always gonna be my input value, so write those elements down. My bottom is going to be my outputs. Write those elements down. Okay. Now, when we have it in a relation, right, sometimes the hardest part is writing it in a numerical order, right? So my domain, remember, my domain is all my X values. So when I go to write this, what I like to do is just cross out. I look for my lowest one, so negative 2. Right, cross it out so I know I've used it. Then I know I'm going to go to zero. Right, then I'm going to go one. Then I'm going to go two. And then three. So now I know I've used all of that. My range now, right, if I look, it's my set of y values. So it's going to be two, five, six, seven, negative one, two. So I'm going to start with my lowest value which is negative one. Then I know it goes to two, then five, six, and seven. Okay, so again, you're looking at the X values for the domain, the Y values for the range. Go ahead, pause the video, and let us know, or come back and check your answer. So when I look at letter B, my domain, right, all the ones highlighted in blue, and when I put them in numerical order, negative 5, then I go to 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. My range, right, start with my lowest value, negative 1, then it jumps to 1, 2, 3, and if values repeat, we don't write them more than once. And letter C, okay, negative 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, and my range, negative 5, 2, 3, 4, 6. Now, when we get to graphs, right, what you have to understand with graphs is if something, and we're going to just talk briefly here, if an arrow points to the left forever and ever, we know it starts at negative infinity. If it points to the right forever and ever, we know it goes to positive infinity. If the arrow points up forever and ever, we know it goes to positive infinity. If it points down forever and ever, it's at negative infinity. Then, anytime we have an open dot, we're going to use a round parenthesis. Close dot, we're going to use square. You should know by now, anytime you use infinity or negative infinity, both of these use round brackets. Okay? Now, here's the thing. When we write the domain, we always write it from left to right. Range, we always write from bottom to top. So right away here when I look at 4A, my domain, if I look at this arrow, it points down to the left forever and ever, down to the right forever and ever. So since it's going to the left forever and ever, I know it's going from negative infinity, and as I look, it's going to the right forever and ever, so it's going to positive infinity. So my domain would be negative infinity, right, to positive infinity. My range, however, if I work from the bottom up, if both of these arrows are pointing down forever and ever, 
the bottom is starting at negative infinity. But as I crawl up, where is the top of this at? The top of this is at a y value of negative 3. So our range would start at negative infinity because we work from the bottom up. And it goes all the way up to negative 3. Since negative 3 is a point on that graph, we use a square bracket. All right. But you guys have to understand when to use infinity and negative infinity. Here, when I look, this arrow is pointing to the left forever and ever, and same with this. So when we go to find the domain, as we work left to right, what x values are on this graph? Well, it starts at negative infinity on the left, and as we go all the way to the right, where does it stop? It stops at 4, and 4 is included, so it's a square bracket. Now my range, however, this arrow points down forever and ever, this arrow points up forever and ever. There's, so at the bottom, this starts at negative infinity, and it goes all the way to the top to positive infinity. There's no stopping point up top. The next one, if I look here, my domain, this arrow goes up into the left forever and ever. So on the left, it's starting at negative infinity. It's going to travel, go all the way. If you look, these are in... These go by 2, so it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? So it goes all the way to 6 and stops. Now the range, where does it start on the bottom? I'm just going to say that's like negative 11, right? So it starts at negative 11, and it, since it goes up forever and ever, that's going to go to positive infinity. Next. My domain here now, where does it start on the left? It starts at negative 4 on the left, and it goes, travels to the right all the way to an arrow pointing to the right, which is positive infinity. Now the range, where does it start on the bottom? Well, that bottom y value is negative 3, so it starts at negative 3. Since it goes up forever and ever, it goes to positive infinity. Okay, now this one here, right? Notice this arrow. This arrow is going to actually point down forever and ever. So although it looks like it starts at zero, that arrow tells me it's going to start, oh, sorry, um, go down into the right forever and ever. So it starts at zero for the domain on the left, but it goes all the way to positive infinity on the right. Now my range, since the arrow points down forever and ever, it's actually going to start at negative infinity, but where does it end up top? It ends up at 10. Since it's a closed dot, we use a square bracket. Go ahead, try the student practice, and let us know if you have any questions.